that the dream was over. But here's the truth, your dream is just beginning. The best of the best is coming together. The USFL and the XFL are merging to create the United Football League, the UFL. The best spring football league in the world. What a catch! Yeah! It's one of the most insane catches I've ever seen. One man to be! He gone! He 96 gone. yards <laughs> to the house! These players are going to play hard-nosed, intense football. Into the end zone. Yeah! No way! Let's ball out, baby! Shout out St. Louis! A record-breaking crowd at the Battle Dome brought us a Saturday night thriller that you don't want to miss. And which team avoided an 0-2 start this season? We got Renegades Battlehawks coming up. Well, you know who isn't 0-2, Doc? Them San Antonio Brahmas, Woo! unbeaten, unbroken, and unbothered by a fourth quarter deficit. We got highlights coming up. Let the beer flow and let the snake be unleashed. Let's the beer go. snake is back and better than ever. Can the defenders defend home turf and honor the snake? UFL Today starts now. Woo! Welcome into UFL today. My name is Daniel Dopp, joined as always by Scooby Magezza and Joey G, doing what we do every single Sunday night, getting you back in all of the fun UFL action. Guys, recapping everything, Scooby, we had an awesome week again in the UFL this week. Yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it was a hot start, and I'm going to start off hot with this take saying you are that hot. <laughs> the final two minutes of the UFL is the best final two minutes in sports. Because of the specific rules, fellas, we yeah. saw a fourth and 12. We saw a comeback from the San Antonio Brahmas. And on top of that, we saw Michigan get a final fourth down stop in the game. And guess what? We still got another game going on right now that might come down to a fourth de fourth quarter deficit. Yes, the we snake. do. Yeah. 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 Seriously, so much good football. A lot of cool rule things that happened today. Joey G., what you got going on for us in the chat today, my friend? Chat's buzzing as always. We have a poll going up right now. What or who is the most impressive UFL player thus far through two weeks? Ooh. There's some options in the YouTube chat. Cast your votes. We will get to it in just a bit. Yeah, definitely go vote there. I'm very excited to see who our fans pick. I know who I think has been most impressive, but yeah. we'll see what you guys think. Hey, yeah. we got Let's some think, highlights to be able to look at, though. Let's look back at the week that was the UFL, starting with the Battle Hawks and the Renegades. Yeah. We head to the Battle Dome here. Scooby, record attendance. Yeah, over 40,000 people. Spring football has never seen this. Everybody is pumped, including Battle Hacks coach, Anthony Beck. Let's go out there, embrace the embrace the crowd, suck it in, feel the freaking goosebumps on your arms, and go kick somebody's ass. Yes, it's time to play. <laughs> That's a dollar seventy-five for the swear jar, coach. Yep, All right, thanks. six minutes left in the first. AJ McCarron finds his teammate. Marcel Aitman on a quick pass, Scooby. Get used to hearing his name, because Aitman, Aitman, that's what he was doing all day, Dob. Yeah, AJ McCarron also took a big shot on that one. Wasn't afraid to talk to the officials about it either. Hey! No, no, he's right here! No, he did not! No, he did not! It's all in the head, I promise you! He said, I promise, quarterbacks can't lie, Scooby. All right, it's Aitman again. Very similar route to the one we just saw yep. this time. Takes it in from 24 yards out. Gets in for six. He's loving it. The fans are loving it. Aitman's loving it. Everyone's happy here, Scooby. Aitman, man, he's a good dude on the field. Healthy now, so now he's playing the best. Hey, he was also a part of the Bills practice squad last year. Very excited to see what he does in the UFL. All right, Renegades now in the red zone. Lindsey Scott in at quarterback. Fakes a handoff. Lindsey keeps Scott. Himself, decides to use his legs to power his way into the end zone with that one. Are you talking about the Lindsey Scott that was an offensive assistant coach for Texas State this season? I think I am. Uh, now he's scoring touchdowns in UFL. Hey, two-point conversion. Only thing that disappoints me about this play, Scooby, it was too yeah. pretty for two points. It yeah, should have been yeah. worth more than that. I mean, great play design. That's what we do out here in the UFL. And then right. McCarron just coming out and hitting his boy again. That's right. All the way down to the one-yard line. St. Louis on the doorstep. Next play. Mateo Durant takes this one in. 
finishes it off with the one-yard score. You know what he says? What? Look at me, Ma. I'm dancing. Hey. I'm dancing. Hey. Everybody's pumped. Team pumped. <laughs> Fans are pumped throwing confetti out there. But we're not done, Scoob. Renegades no, in the red zone. Luis Perez connects with tight end Sal Canella. Going up top, my boy, Sal Canella. Led the team in receiving last year back. The boy has good hands, just like Allstate. I'm Ooh, shoot, I dice say. out there. All right, closing seconds of the third quarter. McCarron finds, you guessed it, oh, Marcel man. Lehman. This time a 50-yard touchdown. First receiver in the UFL with two receiving touchdowns in the game. Finished with 114. All right, in this one, Davion Smith finds the pay dirt. Three-yard rush. Third lead change of the game, but this one meant just a little bit more to Smith. Davion Smith, who you just told me that touchdown meant a little something more to you. Yep, uh, just lost my brother on Wednesday. Uh, this game is, I got a lot of emotion built up in it. I almost cried on the field, but I'm going to hold it in. I'm going to wait till I get in the locker room after the game, after we get this dub. All right, Battle Hawks go on to tie the game. Taylor Russellino, who had not missed a field goal all season, comes out to try and take the lead, Scooby. Russellino! He pushes it wide right. Oh, Terrible. No. Battle Hawks looking to take control of this game. Mateo Durant says, hey, I got you, fellas. Kentucky product Mateo Durant. 104 yards rushing the most by any player in the UFL this season. Great opportunity for the Battle Hawks here. Two seconds left, and Tyler Schmidt puts it right uh. down the middle. St. Louis wins their home opener at 27 to 24. AJ McCarron had himself a day. He's got a few things to say about it, too. Can can! Can can! Why that? They switched it. <laughs> they switched it! <laughs> Hey, that's a touchdown. Yeah! Let's go! Hold on, AJ. Gosh. Yeah. He's getting uh, time out. Time out. Hey, you didn't see my queen came up? Why, why did they not stop it for AJ if he's on the sideline? I know! <laughs> And I know we got some more highlights. Yeah, How about do. the Birmingham Stallions take it on the Michigan Panthers? And they're looking good. This is your team, Doc. Yes, it is. We'll pick it up in a second. Stallions up 3-0. EJ Perry looks to throw, and it's tipped and picked by the Stallions. Drop balls and overthrows. Got to get those, Doc. Yeah, Scooby, EJ Perry under duress all game long mm -hmm. from the Stallions defense. AJ Thomas with that pick there. Yeah, Stallions end up taking a 6-0 lead. Struggle to score touchdowns in this game. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Panthers next time. Let's switch quarterbacks. Danny Etling trying to make something happen. But watch out for John Dre Tillman. Just like Chris Brown, he says, give me that. Boom. Fumble on the play. That's back-to-back -back turnovers for us. Yeah, not just back-to-back -back turnovers. That highlights a problem we had only six times in the red zone. One touchdown, Scooby. Mm. That's not going to work for this team. Yeah, it, uh, three points aren't as much as six points, if I know math correctly. That's right. Now, that's all the Birmingham uh, Stallions will get. It's 9-0. EJ Perry this time goes deep and finds Marcus Sims. Woo! And it's a Sims party. He's fast as heck, boy. <laughs> Three catches, 96 yards for Sims. He hit a second level there. Watch this. As soon as he catches the ball, it's like he turns on the Jets and <laughs> whoop. Nope, not going to catch me. Can't catch me. Finally, the Panthers get on the board, cut it to 9-7. Would like to see them go for three, make it 9-9, but whatever. 35 seconds left in the half. Stallions looking to add to their lead. This is old school. Three bats in the backfield. Corral hands it to Ricky Pearson Jr., and he does the rest. Woo. I love that, being able to get in the end zone. I mean, Michigan defense played well today, but mm -hmm. when you're that close to the end zone, Scooby, it's you better, tough. You better be able to get it in. That's right. At this point, 17-7 Stallions. And then they try to think if they're going for a field goal, coach checks with his kicker. <laughs> How far is it? How far is it? Huh? 62. 62. Jay! Jay! Do you want to do it? 62? Do it. 62. How about a 62 yarder? Snap is down, clean hold, kick is up, and it is good. Build him the statue right now. His name is Himothy. 
or Jake Bates. 62 yard <laughs> field goal is good. Makes it 17 10 at the half. Fourth quarter now. Stallions looking to add to their lead. But this is what we talked about earlier. Duh. Another red zone turnover. That's right. Michigan Matt defense Krause gets good. out. But he gets undercut there by the safety. Mm -hmm. How pretty of a play is that by the defense? Right when you think Matt Corral going to make a play evading that rush. Gets picked in the end zone. Scooby, terrible, terrible news. Yeah, Panthers have a chance. 20 seconds left, fourth and six. Taco Charlton gets through and gets the sack. Story of the game was Birmingham's defensive front. They were tough getting the better of Michigan's. They win it 20 to 13 and improve to 2 and 0. Oh. It's like they didn't even block Taco Charlton on that last play. It's just they just let him run yeah. in and sack the quarterback. I, I don't know what was going on that. A lot of costly mistakes from Perry, especially when it came down to um, taking sacks that he shouldn't have taken. But listen, Dop, the guy that everyone's talking about, I know Birmingham, you won the game, Jake Bates. Absolutely incredible, buddy. Dude, I, I'm a Lions fan, right? We need a kicker. You're playing at Ford Field. If the Detroit Lions do not surround that stadium, lock him inside, handcuff him to the field goal post, <laughs> yeah. and make him sign a contract, oh, we are all going to be upset. By what the way, is this? That's real right there. Number 38, <laughs> not yeah. currently taken on the Lions roster. Jake Bates, please, please <laughs> call my man Brad Holmes. Let's get this thing done. All right. Uh, hey. Uh, Joey G, what we got in there with the chat at this point? How are they feeling they about, saying Jake good things Bates? about Jake Bates? Hey, they right. better. Or we all got problems, uh, baby. Uh, yeah. let, let's check in with the chat. You know, we're trying to make y'all feel a part of the show. What they talk about That's over there. That's it. Uh, Jersey, Jersey the King, of course, his weekly shout out. He's always watching. Uh, Jake Boots. It might be a good Jake nickname. Boots. I like, Jake, Jake Jake, Boots, I like Bates, that. I like that nickname. Jake will, Boots will be on an NFL roster this upcoming season. That's a hot take. Uh, do have a poll in the chat as well. Uh, I mentioned off the top of the show that we have one in there. Which UFL player has been the most impressive so far? AJ McCarron is leading the pack right now, 52%. That's way too high. Wow. Especially since that guy did not text me back today for trying to come on the show. <laughs> but that's besides Shots the point. Fired, AJ. Uh, Jake Bates, 18%. Chase Garbers, QB for the Brahmas, going to be joining us in just a, just a little bit. And Marcel Aitman, 13%. But everybody loves Jake Bates. Daniel, I'm with you. If we got to start a petition or something like that to get yes. this guy in a Detroit Lions uniform, I mean, let's go. Yeah, we got a lot of teams that could use kickers in the NFL. I'm just saying, Lions are just one of them, and he happens to kick pretty well at Ford Field. Nothing about that, you know? Yeah. All right, we got another game that we're looking at. We're full of UFL content here. It's Brahma's taking on the Showboats. First game at home for Memphis. Showboats are led by the man, the myth, the legend, the guy that is Case Cookus. You remember that guy, mm -hmm. Scooby? Yeah. That's Case him right there. Cookus, baby. Hey, I liked him a lot last week. Thought he had a good showing and that he could definitely build upon, and he did that early in the game. Yeah, beginning of the first quarter. Seems like he couldn't communicate with his coach very well, though. Hey, gun, dice left close. 200 Jet Omaha Lion. Gun, dice left close. Gun, dice left close. 200 Jet Omaha Lion. Gun, dice left close. 200 Jet Omaha Lion. Hey, quarterback, are you not hearing me? Hey, hey, are you hearing? Did you hear that? Weird walkie-talkies don't seem to be working. All right, Cookus finds Daywood Davis for a pretty two-yard pitch and catch for six showboats going up there. Go for the extra point as well. Cookus says, why pass it when I can use my legs, dive into the end zone head first? Everyone loves quarterback plays like that. Case Cookus is sneaky fast. You would never think it, but he got that speed. At the end of the first, Scooby, we see Max Roberts getting his shoes spray painted here. Uh, uh, apparently, bro bought the wrong cleats, but decided to get him spray painted on the side. Spray paint has plus two acceleration. Watch this. <laughs> speed rush gets to the quarterback, Ooh. knocks out the ball. Strip sack. And he not only gets the strip sack, but he gets the recovery. And then he takes his helmet off. Why you got to uh, take your helmet off when you do so many good uh, things like uh, that? Got, got, got real emotional. You know, maybe it's the paint, uh, the fumes. The fumes, the that's, what it is. that's what it does to you. you know I'll tell you what, gives you that extra motor, but you got to keep your composure. Yes. <laughs> Only 14 total yards of offense and one first down for the Brahmas. All right, to the third we go. Jumbo tough 13 0. And that was close right there to Sage Surratt. Drops a tough one in coverage. That's the kind of play Sage usually can come down with. We saw mm -hmm. him make that kind of play when he was in college. That would set up a field goal later for Memphis. Now the beginning of the fourth. 16-0 when we start Whoa. this comeback. San Antonio finds my man Chase Garbers to Marquez Stevenson. Brahma's on the board. Great play right move there. move ahead here. This is when A.J. Smith conversion. started to dial it up a little bit. 50 seconds left. 
Garbers hits John Trey Kirkland for a five yard touchdown. That pass interference don't mean anything. John don't Trey. look now, Scooby. Brahma's only down five. Yeah, and that's what you got to love about the UFO rules. No matter what, you have a chance. And what do we have here yeah. with this special chance, Doc? Teams can keep the ball after scoring with a successful onside kick or a fourth and 12 conversion from their mm -hmm. own 28-yard line. That's what we're trying here in Garbers. Fourth and 12, Drops maybe. back. Onside attempt. Let's go! Boom! Picks up that first down. Enough to be able to keep the chains moving. Scooby, they kept the ball after scoring that touchdown. More football. Fast I'm forward. all for it. Eight seconds left. Garbers rolls out. Finds my man Cody Latimer. Cody Back had to the a game. end zone. 20 to 19. Garbers had a game. Man, a terrific comeback right there. Great example of how the UFL can score points in a hurry. I'll tell you what, though. It was really the coaches that were the story of this game for me. And I would have liked it. He can't change his mind. I'm going to get JJ away from the freaking sideline. Unsportsmanlike on 70s. He should, be, he should be out of the game. He threw a punch. He just threw a punch. First down. At some point, we got to make a decision and go. To decline? Yeah. We have to decline the penalty? Yeah. yeah. We, yes. we yes. have yeah. to decline, decline it. Why would we have to decline a penalty? Wait, you get another penalty? Hey, if you get another penalty, you're going to hurt the team, right? Being selfish. Huh? You're going to be a man or you're going to help the team? <laughs> and now we welcome in Brahma's quarterback, Chase Garbers. Chase, I got to tell you, we just watched legendary coach Wade Phillips talking down one of your teammates. What's it like when you have a coach like that come to talk to you on the sideline? Well, it's been great to have Coach Wade uh, you know, lead our team, obviously, you know, his background and experience in professional football speaks for itself. So, you know, to, to be in the same room as him and be on the same sideline as him is obviously very special. Yeah. And another thing that's really special about your coaching staff is the fact that it's the same one from Houston. Essentially, mm -hmm. you got AJ Smith, your offensive coordinator. I mean, he was kind of one of the really popular guys of the XFL season, really bright offensive mind. I like what he said at the end of the first half, how you guys were facing adversity early on in the season and you had to kind of battle through it. So take us through the process of you guys weathering that storm with the slow start and the eventual explosion in the fourth. Yeah, I mean, it shows, you know, a lot about on who you are as a team when you go through adversity and, you know, offensively in the first half, we, we were awful, um, you know, very limited plays, very limited production. And, you know, we just had the plan coming out of half to take it one play at a time. And, you know, I think we did a very good job of that in the second half, which obviously led us to win the game. But, you know, it's everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face. And, you know, I think we we stepped on our own foot in the first half, but we came out in the second half ready to roll. Was there like an aha moment in the locker room or on the sideline where you guys were like, OK, now that we've done that, we figured it out? I wouldn't say there was an aha moment. You know, we kept shooting ourselves in the in the first half, penalty after penalty, three and out, turnover. Um, you know, we really just told ourselves to get out of the sticks, take it one play at a time, which led to one play to drive and one score at a time. Uh, and once you get, you know, a bunch of su successful plays rolling in, you know, in one drive, you're really able to to move down the field and score. And that's just what we had to do. Yeah, and we saw in a handful of opportunities how quickly points can be scored in the UFL. Rules a little different here than some of the other NFL or college football that we've seen. You got the extra point rule, right? You got the onside kick. You got the 4K camera. You have the super challenge where yeah. coaches can basically challenge anything. Is there one play or one thing that you like most about the differences of rules within the UFL? Well, obviously, it's very friendly towards an offense because you're able to score as many points as possible. Um, I think, you know, going for one, two, or three, a nine-point game in this league is one possession, where in the NFL it's two. Um, and then, obviously, the fourth and 12 point by kick rule, very, you know, played into our favor there at the end. Um, but that is also, you know, a very cool aspect of the new rule. Heck, yeah, man. Super cool. One thing I have a question about, though. You got all these new advancements, and we're still using walkie-talkies on the sideline, Chase? Like, what's going on with that? You don't have helmets? You don't have a way to talk to a coach without a walkie-talkie? We got helmets. We got the full headset, but just sometimes, you know, it cuts in and out, and, you know, maybe a walkie-talkie is the 
just in the moment. Um, but the technology is, is definitely awesome to have on the sideline, especially with the uh, live video on the iPads. Oh, yeah. Chase, listen, we're going to get The Rock on the line. We're going to get you guys some actual in-helmet microphones, all right? But, hey, the Brahmas <laughs> are 2-0. and You're atop the XFL division. I hate to break it to you. You guys were plus 1,200 to win the title this season. Those odds have cut in half after two weeks. How confident is that locker room right now, man? I think we got a real confident team. You know, obviously in football, it's one it's one week at a time. Um, you know, we had a great win uh, yesterday, but you know, today's a new day, and we got a new public this week. And you know, just take it day by day. And you know, ultimately, our goal is to win every game possible. Um, that's what we're shooting for. Chase, so one of the key moments besides what you guys just did was the fake field goal. I mean, the entire football world was going crazy yeah. uh, when it happened. We even got yelled at by our neighbor in the building <laughs> for yelling a little bit too much because of what was happening. What was, uh, what was going through on the sideline for you when you were watching that play go on? Honestly, on the quarterback side, we had no idea what was going on. <laughs> um, you know, we're not there for special teams meetings. Um, so we saw Brad take a snap in a shotgun alignment and, you know, kind of survey the field and he, he hucked it up to Alex and, you know, he came down with it and had a little 15 yard sprint to the end zone. Um, but I could definitely say we were, we were pretty shocked on our sideline, especially who the ball went to, um, but <laughs> Alex made a heck of a play. Uh, scale of one to 10. What do you, what do you rate his throw on that play? <laughs> You know, he, he floated it up there a little bit, but you know, he was pretty good with his progression, looking off guys. Yeah. Uh, and he, you know, ultimately, it's it's about the completions and touchdowns, so he did a pretty good job. That's right. Chase, before we let you go, Coach Wade Phillips has any professional football head coach beat by 11 years. The man is 76 years old, but I'll tell you what, from your guys' locker room post, this man can turn it up. How cool was this moment following yesterday's win over the showboats? It's great having Coach Wade celebrate with us, um, you know, especially with how many wins he's been a part of. To see him still, you know, get super excited uh, is truly awesome. And, you know, we look to have more videos of that going forward. Heck yeah, man. Chase 2-0 and so far to start the season, long season ahead. But I think you guys got a lot on your plate to be excited about. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right, coming out, looking at the UFL standings right now. Scooby, we got two 2-0 two teams at the top. Still have the Roughnecks and Defenders playing as we are doing this right now. But we got two good-looking 2-0 two teams, my friend. Yeah, and I still stand by what I said last week with the Brahmas being the best team in the UFL. Definitely a slow start. Uh, I thought they looked a little bit sloppy, but uh, they eventually figured it out. Now, the thing with the Stallions, which you and I have talked about yet again, Daniel, is the fact that they got this two QB system going on. It, it, at some point, please pick one guy because you can notice that the quarterback doesn't have as much chemistry with his wide receivers. And I, as a former pass catcher, there is a difference between ball speed, between uh, arm trajectory, between um, how hard a quarterback throws. And as you work that chemistry with a quarterback, it's important to get used to it with one guy, and they keep on switching back and forth. It feels like it'd be tough to get into a flow from that perspective if you're always pulling someone out like that, especially a signal caller at that stage. Yeah, and that's, that's the one part of their team that feels to be struggling, right? Their offense. Right. You get six different uh, chances to go into the red zone and you only score one touchdown yeah that's tough all right joe we got some things happening over on there in the youtube chat tell me what's happening hey quick shout out to sean who's watching the show he just loves the rules element to the ufl as yeah. in the brahma's comeback kind of unprecedented in the nfl unless a, a barring a miracle uh but just being able to cap off all those points quickly and of course turn around a fourth and 12 from your own 28 um, is really good stuff. Uh, we got a, like I said, the polls still going in the chat right now. Which UFL player has impressed you the most this season? That damn know. AJ McCarron's running away at 53%. Jake Bates at second at 18%. I think enough people aren't watching Michigan Panthers games. And that's nothing against AJ McCarron. But what Jake Bates has done, 
Back-to-back -back games with 60-yard field goal, Scooby? It's only been done once in NFL history. Brett Maher did it in 2019 in week six and seven. I'm sorry. It has never been done again in the NFL. So Jake Bates has done something that Justin Tucker has not done, is what you're nope. telling me? <laughs> Justin Tucker has not Good done company. it. Nobody else but Brett Maher in the NFL has done back-to-back 60-yard -back field goals in back-to-back -back weeks. Dude. The guy is going to be getting calls, and that's for sure. Absolutely. All right, hey, we're not done yet. We got a couple more. Wait. Do you guys smell that? Yeah, I do smell something. Yeah. You guys smell? If you smell it, what, what the, the rock, rock is cooking. cooking. That's right. You heard it. Our newest segment takes a look at all of our Come favorite plays and moments from the week. Scooby, <laughs> do you smell what was cooking here in week two? Give me one of your favorite plays or moments. If you smell what De La Haye is cooking, the kicker, the destroying, destroying the returner right here on this play. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. My boy came into the week leading the UFL in kickoff yardage. So he decided to take matters in his own hands and make sure that you smell what he was cooking. Boom! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's it. Hey, what about that deep ball? You smell what Marcus Sims is cooking? Take a look at this. Woo! Not just grabbing it in along the sideline, but finding a way to accelerate yeah. down the sideline, getting away from that defender. You smell what Marcus Sims is cooking? Longest offensive touchdown in the UFL Woo! so far this season. Pretty dime from Woo! EJ Perry all the way down the sideline, Marcus Sims. You smell what Sims is cooking on that 74-yard touchdown? Thank you very much. That's right. What the paint fumes are cooking. Maxie Roberts packed the wrong cleats, Whoops. but it don't matter. My boy's got spray paint on the sideline. The following possession gets a strip sack. If you smell what a dog like him is cooking, it doesn't matter what type of cleats that he has. It doesn't matter what <laughs> offensive lineman you're going to use to block him. Jabroni. He is going to get in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about getting lost in translation, Scooby? We got walkie-talkies on the sideline. I still can't understand what's happening. Uh, someone tell me what's going on here. <laughs> can't hear you, Daniel. Hey, 11. Uh, hey, gun dice left close. 200 Jet Omaha nope. Lion. Talking gun to me? dice left close. Gun dice left close. 200 Jet Omaha Lion. 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 Hey, are you hearing? Did you hear that? Guys, are you hearing this? Oh, wait. Maybe it's because we're using walkie talkies. <laughs> what the chase is cooking. Chase Garbers, that is. Listen. Sometimes, just like a slow cooker, it takes some time before your meal is ready. So what he was cooking was done in the fourth quarter, down by 11 points with one minute left. My boy was cooking up a comeback. That's how you do it, Chase Garbers. We smell you. Hey, how about me? I'm smelling 60-yard bombs over here last week. Jake Bates drills a 64-yarder this week. Boom. Just a cool 62 yards. Insane. If the Detroit Lions do not lock him in that stadium, handcuff him to that field goal post, and sign him to a contract, every Lions fan everywhere is going to be upset. Tell him. Oh, my Hell gosh. yeah, brother. You better <laughs> you sign what. him real quick. That's right. Hey, it's not the only guy that was smelling what we were cooking. Taco Charlton out there smelling quarterbacks all day long. Check this out. Fourth down play, they don't even block you. What was your mindset? Uh, I was I was I was surprised. I mean, obviously, you know, throughout the whole game, you know, I kind of you know was going out to left tackle, giving them problems. So I thought I was getting a chip, and then to see nothing, I was like, you know, eyes turned green at that point. Great job today. Go have fun with your with your friends, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, quick update from the Roughnecks Defenders game. This is Jordan Tamu deep pass Woo! to Ty Scott, 17 yards, gets in the end zone. Defenders go up 21-18 under two minutes left to go in the game. Now up 23 to 18. Defenders leading the Roughnecks. Scooby, 
Another really good one here. I, like Jordan Tiamu has looked fantastic so far. Hopefully yeah. he continues to look Yeah, I mean, he is eight, 16 for 32, 212 yards and two touchdowns in the game right now. As for the Houston Roughnecks, they had uh, Jared Garantano go down with an injury. Reed Sennett uh, stepped up into the game. He's playing decent, 19 for 29, 221 yards and a touchdown. But it is definitely the defender's game. However, as we know, y'all, is never over until it's over in the UFL. That's right. And we saw that firsthand this week, one of the most exciting things about mm -hmm. week two in the UFL. That's going to do it for us, but don't forget, we're going to be back every single Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, making sure that we can recap you on all the UFL action for Scooby and Joey G. My name is Daniel. Don't forget to love each other. Be kind to yourself. Hey, maintain your composure! <laughs> Stay cool, guys. We'll see you next week.